Well, in less than a half hour, President Obama is expected to depart the White House for Connecticut. He will give a speech on gun control. As we hear, the Senate may still not have the votes to pass the bill the president wants. He will appear about an hour's drive from Newtown, Connecticut, the site of the Sandy Hook school shooting in December. And when the president heads back to Washington, some Newtown families, we are told, will be with him on Air Force One. Many of these families have been outspoken in their calls for a nationwide ban on the kind of weapons used in the Newtown massacre. David Wheeler, who lost his own six-year-old son, Ben, in an emotional appeal on 60 Minutes last night. We have an obligation to our children to do this for them. And it's, go it's going to happen again. It is going to happen again. And every time, you know, it's somebody else's school, it's somebody else's town, it's somebody else's community, until one day you wake up and it's not. Hmm. But while united in their grief, the Newtown families are not unanimous when it comes to the push for new gun control laws. Mark Mattioli, whose son James would have turned seven last month, believes more gun laws are not the answer, and he says the focus needs to be on something else. Mark Mattioli is here with me now live in the studio. Mark, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Um, in watching those families last night on 60 Minutes, it was incredible to see their strength and their ability to even just function in this world four months after their children were so suddenly and terribly killed. Let's just start with that. How are, how are you managing to function in this world right now? Well, I'm, uh, I'm broken, devastated, drowning in grief. But even though each week that goes by is becoming uh, not necessarily easier, uh, I'm compelled to participate in this debate because I'm not hearing a voice that's really uh, agreeing with me. I, I believe there are tens of millions of people out there who agree that gun control isn't necessarily the solution, but <clears throat> perhaps it's a way to avoid some of the sadness to participate in the debate. I don't know. Mm -hmm. and, and you are right, because so many of the Newtown families have joined in the push for gun control, and certainly you respect them and their opinions and their beliefs about what needs to happen out of this tragedy. But you do feel di very differently. Why, why do you feel that gun control and the, the, the push for any one of these bills we're seeing right now is not the way to go? Well, uh, you know, perhaps you've, used, you've heard the term before, but I feel it's a false premise. Gun control works for people who abide by the laws. Criminals who conduct most of the gun crime don't care about the law. They won't look up the Connecticut law to see how many guns, uh, how many bullets have to be in the magazine that they're supposed to register with the state police at some point in the future once they come up with a blueprint for how to administer that. Mm -hmm. and, and yet some of the parents made the point to 60 Minutes that still they could be slowed down. The law could slow future killers down by limiting the magazine clips available to them and perhaps that could have made a difference in Newtown, talking about um, you know, how he had to reload and how 11 kids managed to escape the classroom when the killer there reloaded, and why wouldn't we limit magazines on the federal level in the wake of that knowledge? Right, so um, again, false premise in that they're not talking about confiscating those magazines. The magazines are out there. If we were starting at point A and there were no guns and no magazines, fine. Perhaps we could talk about that, but there are millions, tens of millions of these out there, and criminals aren't going to hand them back. Mm -hmm. So why should I be hampered, hampered in protecting myself when someone is, could come to my home and outgun me? Should I feel safer because New York criminals will only be loading seven bullets in their 15-round magazine? I don't think so. What do you believe these lawmakers need to be focused on? Well, you know, the lawmakers, they write laws, and... You know, if you're a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. That's what they do. I didn't have much uh, optimism about what they were going to bring through after what they did with the Cheshire home invasion. All they did was repeal the death penalty. There's no accountability for your actions. I believe accountability, enforcement of existing laws. You, I talked to the U.S. attorney, the David Fine for Connecticut, and he, you know, I said, increase mandatory minimum sentences on gun-related crime. 
That does it. You don't need a new law. You need to enforce the laws that you have. Mm -hmm. I know you've spoken, uh, among other topics, about parental responsibility and how important that is. And I want to ask you specifically, are, is, is that a reference to Nancy Lanza? And do you hold her responsible, accountable in any way for this crime? You know, it's been four months, and for most of that time, I've been quite charitable toward her. I, have, I didn't give the how, the, the why, and, and the how much, you know, we all knew the who, what, when, and where. But yes, uh, it is, I do hold her accountable. It, a massive failure in parenting, and, and, and things could have gone so much better if, if she had been a responsible parent. And I, I think in light of this tragedy, there's so much that can be shared about parenting. I'm learning more, and I, I think uh, that should be spread across the country. Just focus on your kids. There's no more important job nurturing, loving, being present and positive force in their lives. And the mental health system, uh, which you feel has been all but ignored in the wake of Newtown. Right, there's so much that it, they're missing the boat here, and I fear that the political forces are focusing on gun control when major failing in mental health initiatives. So in Connecticut, the governor's talking about we need mental health, they're proposing this task force, and yet he's slashing the budget to hospitals by $550 million. So they're, they're the ones who treat mental illness, they diagnose it, they treat it. How are they supposed to do that when these dollars are taken out of their system? It it's, makes no sense. Many of the Newtown families seem to suggest that they will be heard and seem to be implying that if this if this doesn't get done at the federal level it will be an affront to the Newtown families and they will continue to push for it I mean if, if you could speak to these lawmakers directly who are gonna look at this federal bill this week what would you say two things really one would be I given this situation have a seat at the table I've been in the room and they are approaching this in a very incremental way. They will take what they can get and take and take and take. And so I would caution legislators, be wary of that. Second, I feel like in Connecticut, when you watch the, the hearings, the, the legislative session, there, this groupthink is taking place. They're suspending reason and critical analysis when those are what we need for, of these legislators to make reasoned decisions about the Second Amendment and other you know, things that uh, affect our liberties here. It's just, it's unbelievable. It's very hard when you look at these grieving parents, including yourself, who are asking you to do something, um, to not do it. You know, it, I think most of us, our instinct is anything anybody can do to ease your grief or their grief in any way we're in favor of. But there is a split on, on what that outcome should be. I, I want to take you back, if I can, just briefly, to December 14th uh, of last year, some of the, the parents, speaking to Scott Pelley of 60 Minutes, talked about that day, which we covered here in America Live as it was happening, and talked about how they were looking for their kids, they were searching for their kids. And I haven't heard you discuss that, but I, I just want the viewers to hear what some of the parents had to say and, and get your reaction if you're willing, Mark, stand by. And then I got a text from Jimmy, I have Isaiah, but I don't have Anna yet. Um, so I was driving with my friend back to Sandy Hook and I just kept texting Jimmy every 10 or 15 seconds, Anna, question mark. And then Anna, exclamation point, because we had Isaiah. I didn't understand why we didn't have Anna. I just kept looking, thinking, when am I gonna see Dylan? Um, when am I gonna see Miss Soto? Or when, I gonna, when am I gonna see any of the kids from his classroom? But then everyone was just going home and You just don't know what you're supposed to do or who to talk to because no one had all the information. And then um, and it just started to be fewer and fewer parents and kids in the room. And then they asked everyone who was left to come to one of the back rooms. And I remember looking at Jimmy and saying, I don't want to go in that back room. I don't want to go in that back room because I know what the back room meant. In my heart, as a mother, I knew what the back room meant. Did you go in that back room? Yes. What happened back there, Mark? Well, first, it, it, you know, similarly I arrived, I was able to find my daughter in, uh, let's call it the mayhem. It was 
people all over the place trying to find their kids and teachers trying to keep the kids calm. Uh, in the back room, that was sort of okay. They've already found the parents for the kids who are there. Um, let's go put your name on a list and uh, wait and see what comes. So it, it was very surreal. I, I, there are moments from that uh, experience burned in my brain that uh, you know, people's faces in the room and, and so forth, but uh, not much more I can say about that. Mm -hmm. And in the days after that, I know you've done a lot of self-examination about how, what is your global responsibility now? I mean, how do you make your life matter, your son's life matter, how do you make this world a better place? You know, there, this, is, this is the enormity of this loss is just starting to reveal itself. An Easter egg hunt, a trip to the dentist, but I had a plan for how to make this world better. My son was a big part of that plan. That's all I can say. Mark, thank you so much for being here. All the thank best you. to you and your beautiful little boy. We'll be right back.